presentation of Cablevision local program. TV that's close to home. One week in the New York State Senate, Senator Greg Ball next on Meet the Leaders. Good evening and welcome once again to Meet the Leaders. I'm your host, Terrence Micus. New York State Senator Greg Ball represents the 40th Senatorial District. That takes in parts of Dutchess, Putnam, and Westchester County. Before that, he was an assemblyman for four years, known as a fighter for the people and trying to keep taxes down and spending low. We're going to talk to him about all that and, of course, uh, Governor Cuomo's State of the State address and many other things. Welcome to Meet the Leaders. Pleasure to be here. How are Congratulations you? Congratulations on your victory. Hard Thank you. Hard fight. Crazy you know. fight. Um, but, you know, you move on and you work with the people that you ran against. You work with everyone because now you represent them. Uh, we saw you up in Albany. In fact, we interviewed you up in Albany yep. for a short time. The governor gave a rousing state of the state address. Uh, Democrat, sounds like, according to your words and others, you know, some of the fiscal issues like a Republican. Yeah. What's your overall assessment of that speech? You know, a lot of the Democrats are not talking like old, old line Democrats any, any longer. Um, it's a new day in Albany, I hope. Um, you know, first to step back for a second, the fact that we were in. Uh, that well instead of being in the assembly chamber really isn't only historic but also because you have to understand you know from a, I was in the assembly and your best day your finest day is probably your first day it's all downhill from there right? because and, you uh, don't have the majority <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and then uh, then reality hits but um, you know sitting in that chamber when the governor comes in and the, you know the senators come in it's a beautiful august chamber so the governor decided to, to switch that and you know part of it is you know the governor. You saw our so you're talking about he had he did it at the egg, right? Right at yeah. the egg. Uh, you know that big conference uh, center had over 2,000 people, and by doing that, had he put it in the assembly chamber, he would literally have to go the governor on bent knee to Sheldon Silver, that 800-pound grill in the room, to say, "Can I please get some tickets for my guests?" And the governor said, "You know what? We're going to change this. Put it in in his own domain where he's in control, um, and uh, kind of you know change the balance of power at least on that day." So it's a subtle sending of message to Sheldon Silver in some way. Not just so, not so subtle. It's kind of a big deal. It was kind of a big deal and, and I you know behind the scenes you heard a lot and, and not only that you know there's a little bit of I think some of the legislators many of them were upset at least from the, the assembly side the Senate doesn't care because they just give us folding chairs down, down in the well anyways um, but he really was successful at, at taking that message and, and incorporating the people's will mm -hmm. into that message and really getting two people on record. My leader, Dean Skelos, about reform, about a tax cap, about, you know, about ethics reform and whatnot, incorporating them into the speech, but also Shelley Silver. You have, there's a guy you have that's talking about a tax cap. I mean, I really thought the aliens took over his body. No, no, I, I know that, that was really amazing to a lot yeah. of people that he went on record to say it, but a lot of people also said, look, if Shelley Silver talked about a tax cap, yeah. there must have been some talking or some deal done before that he would come out so boldly and say that there must have been something worked out with the governor and with the And that, you know what, that's not a bad thing. Um, if we've gotten to a point where really the chief obstructionist of New York State, because Shelley would just wait out most governors um, and just go into a back room and say, okay, until it's Shelley's way, I'm not coming back with my ball, mm -hmm. which is absolutely ridiculous, mm -hmm. right? So if he's willing it, at this early in the game to talk about a huge proposal like a tax cap, we could be in a very good position. Do you think that maybe, you know, because of the move uh, for... Andrew Cuomo and you know you, you look at uh, New Jersey governor and people like that and people starting to see you know people are hurting and they're starting to actually hear it yeah because you know a lot of times it's just you know legislation by you know press release and yeah. stuff no they heard it and look at all the new faces you have nearly 30 new faces in the assembly I don't know how many faces in the Senate but it, it's, a, it's a good good margin so I think even within uh, when I went back to session after the after the election this you know time there were even Democrats who were coming up to me in the assembly chamber talking about reform measures which you never would have heard of before and speaking openly against Shelley Silver so I think he's heard heard the cause of it. Do, do you believe that if any way and again I know this is speculation do you believe that the, the assembly speaker and then you know we'll move on from that may feel that you know what 
Governor Cuomo has so much power and so many people that support him, he could actually, I don't want to use the term coup, but he could actually make him lose his position as speaker. You know, Silver is in a district that has been absolutely ger gerrymandered. I mean, he, uh, it, you got to wear green shades. I mean, it's Vegas time in his district. I mean, he brings tens of millions of dollars back to that district. Um, we're up in redistricting where he's going to have a very powerful position when it comes to say in the assembly. So I don't think he has much to worry about because he could always cut it. I don't it. mean him losing that. Yeah. I meant getting him out of the position of speaker by having enough people vote him out. It's, it's a possibility. I think, I think we have a rare moment where Sheldon Silver may have found his conscience mm -hmm. and realized that he has been in a position where he has run this state into the ground and, and now wants to be part of the, the solution instead of part and of the And what about the Senate? Now you're going to be in the Senate majority. What is their role now? Our role is to serve first as a virtual tax cap and spending cap in New York State. We already have a tax cap. It's called the Republican majority. We have a spending cap. It's called the Republican majority. And that's a very good thing. And uh, we're going to be 32 strong. Hopefully we will grow that, uh, if not before the election and in the next election. And we'll make sure that this governor has a solid Senate majority that he can work with that can get the job done. What about talk of you know Senator Klein and Senator Colucci um, uh, uh, that... Um, I was thinking of forming a new caucus outside there, Democrats, sure. but outside there so that they could work more with the Republican majority on fiscal issues. Hopefully that's the case. You know, ho hopefully that's the case. And uh, if they want to really work, maybe, you know, maybe they should consider a, a change in party <laughs> registration, which would be nice for, for a few of them. But, but outside of that, hopefully they really mean it. And, the, you know, the larger point is we have to focus on the economic issues. This is about taxes, 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 jobs, jobs, jobs. We have another governor in the past who talked about everything changing on day one. And then he went and focused on social issues, right? The issues that divide us. If we focus on the economic issues, get New York State back on track, repealing the MTA payroll tax, uh, capping property taxes, reversing our openly hostile business environment. That's something that everybody can agree on for the most part. You have a couple sellouts, right? But that's what we have to focus on. Really, uh, you know, avoid the social issues and the, the, the landmines that have always blown up. Dr driver's license, when Elliot Spitzer came in, he folded like a cheap suit uh, on the budget to Shelley Silver. And he said, well, you know, you can't, you can't move a battleship, change the course of a battleship in a day. If you don't change this battleship this year, we're done. Yeah. Turns, you pick South Carolina, Texas, Arizona. I love Austin. Pick, pick a place. But if we don't do it this year or this legislative session, it is over. We have to institute these reforms now because we don't need them now. We literally needed them 15, 20 years ago. But the governor did, and you don't need to spend a lot of time in this, bring into this thing, you know, his idea about trying to get, you know, gay marriage, you know, through in his state of the state. That's fine. And if he focuses on that day one, then he's going to follow down the same path as, as Elliot Spitzer. We have to focus on the economic issues. Now, we should bring gay marriage up for a vote, an up or down vote. That's what democracy is all about, and you're going to see that in this new Senate majority. There's no doubt about that, because we're not about playing So it's not going to die in committee. You're going to go there, vote, and what happens Up or down happens. vote. Yeah. Bring it as, a, as an up or down vote. But if that's your focus as governor, when we have people that are losing their homes and losing their jobs, and we have a tax well, crisis. I think he's got that message. I think he's really committed to trying to do to something. It, because too. he's going to have special interest groups that are going to try to force the social issues, whether it be the rap bill, gay marriage, any other you know piece of legislation, immediately. And I'm saying, let's bring everything for an up or down vote, but let's focus on getting our fiscal house in order first. He, he just put you on a committee called the Sage Committee Spending and Government Efficiency Commission. Right. Basically, one of only two senators to be on that commission. Yeah. He picked you to kind of say, you know, to be a voice at the table to say, you know what, we really have to find ways, and he did it by um, executive order, which yeah. was a big move. We have to find ways quick and immediately to get this $9 yeah. billion dollar deficit down. By 20%. So he's talking about consolidation of authorities and government agencies by 20%. That's huge. And you know what? We can do it. We absolutely can do it. We've had this mentality that, oh, well, we, you know, we're only increasing uh, the rate of growth by 8%, 9%, so that's not as bad as last year. We have got, the, the public sector does not create long-lasting jobs that serve our interests. It's the private sector's role uh, to create those jobs. And by, we have to get government out of the way so the private sector can do that. And that's going to be my focus. Before we address that, let me ask you, why Greg Ball? Why did he, do you feel he put you on that commission? I don't know. You'd have to ask the governor. I, I, in terms uh, of what you bring to the nice table. Guy. I'm a nice guy. <laughs> in terms of what you bring to the table and, and your reputation. I'm willing to make tough decisions, I'll tell you that. Uh, you know, I'm not going to have, uh, look, this, this budget process is going to be tough, beyond tough. 
And uh, I believe that this governor is, is on the right track. And when the special interest groups come in to attack this governor and this legislature, I'm not going to fold. Uh, when I, I, I stood up for the property tax cap before the property tax cap was cool. We had the teachers unions come in, do an all-out assault. I think we had over 30 sponsors on the tax cap. By the end of the day, after they got on the phone and made all their threats, we may have had 12. And I was one of those names. And then it began to gain steam again. So uh, we're going to go through that same battle. And I know that this governor and my leader, Dean Skellis, knows that when those assaults come in, I'm going to stand firm. You mean school un the unions, the school teachers unions? Sure. They said, if you don't go our way, we're getting you out? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and to everybody that was on that property tax cut. And you know, there are a lot of good teachers. There everybody are a lot, agrees with that. A lot of good teachers. And, but we have to have a constructive dialogue mm -hmm. um, in this state and beyond um, about how we, it's not about throwing money down a hole. How do we increase our expectations for all of our children mm -hmm. and turn out a better product? Because right now, our children are not capable of competing in the global marketplace. Terrence, I'm going to tell you from a personal perspective, I'm in the hiring process right now as a new state senator. We've gone through hundreds of resumes, and we've interviewed. We have people graduating from four-year schools who cannot communicate uh, either on, on, on a written document or orally. Mm -hmm. And it's sad because, uh, you know, the, the universities have become a business. Yes. Give me your $40,000 check over four years, mm -hmm. and I'll give you a degree. Mm -hmm. But they're graduating. They can't do Excel. Mm -hmm. They can't write a, a sentence that, that makes sense. And I'm not, I'm not attacking them. That, that is horrific. You just paid one hundred and twenty dollars to $160,000. Yeah. You're going to be in debt for the next 30 years. And that institution hasn't given you the skill sets you need. Forget to compete in the global marketplace where we're being beat by places like India and China and, and you know Eastern European countries, but here at home. So you know we've got to have a very serious dialogue of getting our education system back on track. And one of the things that you talked about, you know, the education system costs a lot of money, a lot of dollars go to that, a lot of dollars go to health care, a lot of dollars go to Medicaid. Mm -hmm. But to do that, high taxes, and that often means high taxes on small businesses and the middle class, which is why people are leaving the state to start In with. Droves. And you know, small business owners, all they have to do is set one foot over the border uh, and they can save like 25% of their operating expenditures. If you do a cost-benefit analysis of whether to do business in this state or move elsewhere, typically you move elsewhere. Now, people stay here because they've been here for a long time, they have family here, they have a network here, but from a logical decision, you would set up shop and leave. We've got to change that. New York does not have a future being the number one tax state in the United States of America. And I'm glad we're 45 minutes. I'm 45 minutes from Manhattan in New York City. I love Little Italy, but it is not worth paying the taxes that much to be creamed every single day. And small business owners are forced into a situation, into a black market economy, where they literally have to break the law just to make a living. Let's get honest. I mean, we have got to change that dynamic. I uh, just want to ask you briefly, because um, you know, I know that uh, this was a tough time for you, but you have the seat, the 40th Senate District of uh, former Senator Libel, who served the people for a long time, did many good things, had that unfortunate experience, um, you know, experience that he brought upon himself. Yeah. Uh, you had known about that for a long time. You were, you were kind of saying things about that. There was a little bit of, you know, controversy between the two of you. But at this point, you're, you're feeling as, you know, you feel awful for the guy. I mean, what, how is all that shaken down in terms of Putnam yeah, County? I mean, That's what I want to sure, know. Sure. I mean, nobody, uh, it's no secret the conflict that the senator and I had over the past four or five years. And people now understand why, I think, to a little extent. Um, you know, we have... Uh, it was extremely unfortunate. I can tell you that um, it, it's not about forty thousand dollars. There was a much larger operation going on, and I would never, I, I would never be part of that. And there were individuals in power who knew that they couldn't control me. And when it came to thing like tax increases, and I pointed out the corruption and the patronage, they didn't want to hear that. And that was the source of the conflict. You know, it, there is good and bad in every individual. Okay, except for Mother Teresa, my mom, a few okay. other people, right? Um, and Senator Libel, even though you know we we've had this, there was a lot of good that he did over 30 years. So now it's my job to build upon that good. And we, you know, we have reached out to his former staffers uh, and and associates, and we're working to not be petty in any way, to let it be the past, and to work together, you know, to rebuild a better future for are the district and Putnam County. They are. 
Okay. Uh, very positive. And just quickly, because we have to go to a break, Putnam County, is, how is, it gonna, is Putnam County going to be strong going forward? Absolutely. You know, we have a great interim in uh, Paul Eldridge. Um, the legislature uh, showed that they were going to make an apolitical choice. That could have been the legislature appointing one of their own, which would have been a political disaster and created, you know, World War III in Putnam County. And I think in Mary Ellen O'Dell, you have somebody who put her family, her business on the line. She's going to be a great ca candidate for county executive, should she choose to. Uh, and it would be a great county executive. We're going to take a break. When we get back, we're going to talk more with New York State Senator Greg Ball about a lot of things, including the Gabriella Gifford situation and how elected officials might want to respond to that and how they should conduct themselves. Now, in light of that, we'll be right back. We'll get you moving. Because when you get moving an hour a day, you'll have more energy to do the things you'd like to do. And that's a slam dunk. Whether you like to shoot hoops. Nice shot. Or ride your bike. Kick the soccer ball around. Pop an ollie on your board. Play frisbee in the park. Or just have fun with your friends. Moving every day puts you on the offense. Towards a stronger you. And that makes you part of a winning team. So be a player. Be a player. Because getting active for at least an hour a day fuels your body and your mind. And that helps you keep your eye on the ball. Be a player. Move it your way and be a player. Get up, play, and move it your way. Check out how to be a player at letsmove.gov. Head online to get tips on great ways to get moving every day. That's www.letsmove.gov. <laughs> Lead paint poisoning affects over 1 million children today. Just three granules of lead dust can harm your child. If your home was built before 1978, log on to leadfreekids.org. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. And welcome back to Meet the Leaders. I'm your host, Terrence Micus. My guest is New York State Senator Greg Ball. He used to be Assemblyman from the 99th Assembly District. Now he's the Senator for the 40th Senate District. And we've been talking about a lot of things, uh, Senator. But I do want to touch base on... Um, just this incident that happened recently with uh, Gabrielle Gifford, the uh, Democratic Congresswoman from uh, Arizona. Awful situation. I mean, the young girl, nine-year-old girl was killed. A uh, federal judge was killed. This woman, all she was doing, by most people's assessment of her, she was a terrific c congressional person, you know, working with everybody. Mm -hmm. What's your reaction, Ann? And I want to talk to you about, you know, protection. You guys are out there all the time. You call press conferences. You just invite everybody. We all come. Yeah, I mean, it, it rips your heart out, and uh, it, it makes you sick to your stomach. Um, and, you know, this comes on the heels of where that, that crazed individual walked into the, the school uh, and shot. Uh, school board? Right. And, and, you know, and it, look, I mean, from a Homeland Security perspective, <clears throat> uh, when, it, when, when you're looking at the, the funding, you, you got to, secure the soft underbelly of this country. So Washington, D.C., New York City, our transit, our ports. Um, if, if we allow incidents to get us to the point where we're trying to secure every single McDonald's, every single school board, every every single uh, um, venue where people are mall. going. Yeah. You know, somebody could walk into a mall tomorrow and do, we're going we're gonna to get caught up. And, and one of the things, the, you know, the Homeland Security Department, and it started under the Bush administration, but has continued under this administration, has become a cash cow for grants of people buying Homeland Security golf carts for, you know, golf outings in Long Island. And, you know, so this is a horrific tragedy. We've got to learn lessons from what happened so it, it can hopefully be prevented. Um, but we have to realize that, uh, you know, the, Homeland Security from a much larger perspective, I mean, we have to be worried about a, a tactical nuke. 
in New York City. Uh, in Washington, D.C., we've got to be uh, worried, um, uh, you know, bio threats uh, in, in the United States. So um, a horrible tragedy. I can tell you that it's not going to change, uh, you know, how I operate on, on a day-to-day -day level. We've had, I've had threats as an assemblyman. I had threats, weird phone calls at, you know, 1, 2 o'clock in the morning. Hopefully they were, you know, just out at a, you know, <laughs> yeah. Um, and you know we had we've had other things we've had campaign offices that were uh, vandalized billboards that were vandalized I had dead animal put out in front of my you know my house and uh, law enforcement has to take these things seriously you know he made a comment on I guess it was MySpace or a blog that said goodbye friends right he said that at the, at the very end you know we've got to think about how we use technology if somebody is saying goodbye friends on Facebook or on MySpace something's up maybe somebody should check into something like that so you know you don't want Big Brother monitoring every single movement uh, that we make but we have to at least try to learn some lessons now um, that could maybe hopefully prevent you know something like this happening again and everybody has to be on guard I mean we live we have uh, it's a big country um, I don't like the, the people trying to politicize this in any sense it's looking uh, you know uh, some people are but most aren't but some people some have people been are. Yeah. yeah and it, 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 that this is nothing to be politicized in in any sense there are crazed and, and nutty and horrific and mean and evil people that live and they live on all sides of the political spectrum and typically they're completely detached uh, from reality and uh, you know any sense of what is good and just and neither there are problems in the military too though, right? I guess there's uh, some report out that he failed a drug test uh, before you know trying to be a military recruit um, so you know I, I, any attempts to politicize I think are just not you know not right so we're going up to Albany, and, and we're going to start in the session. And you, you have $9 billion, not you, but the state, me, you, everybody here yeah. listening and, and watching this um, $9 billion deficit. But Governor Cuomo was very you know, clear about saying people shouldn't get hung up on that because the next year yeah. it's going to be you know, $20 billion and then next year, and, and, and this is big. And I was in a meeting just yesterday, and you know, we talked about the stimulus dollars, the billions of dollars of stimulus dollars that came in. And uh, you know, it's a one-shot deal. Those stimulus dollars should have went to put people to work. In my opinion, that's what stimulus funding is for, not to fund social programs. And we use that to fund social programs in New York State. And that money will eventually go away. It's going away. And I had somebody in a meeting yesterday say, oh, we're going to have a cut in our stimulus funds. A cut. <laughs> it's not that's a cut. Okay. You never should have had that money to begin with. That's what we have to change that mentality. Well, Our addiction locales, to social spending. A lot of locales, a lot of mayors and supervisors and people like that had what you called shovel ready. And they were waiting to get the money and they didn't get a lot and of instead, it. Instead, New York State used that to, to fill a, a spending gap. Mm -hmm. And I voted against that. Many of my colleagues voted against it. But I hope people learn that lesson. I can tell you, I'm going to stand firm with this governor and, and, and our majority to make sure that we stop that type of, of one shot deals. All right. So tell me then, you know, specifics. Everybody's, you know, $9 billion. We've got to get it down. We've got to do cuts. Yeah. What do you expect the governor and the New York State Senate, mm -hmm. and if you can get the assembly on board, which yep. is going to be tr more tricky, yeah. um, what are you going to do? What is the plan to get at least the nine billion down quickly? I think you know, and I've never understood. Um, and, and now that I'm in the majority, I hope to have impact on on this. But we had a budget that was passed that, when the governor presented it, cut certain programs like children with autism. Um, AIDS, AIDS uh, crisis centers by 90%, 50% sometimes. And then some programs were getting 30, 40% increases. I would like to see your family's hurting, I'm sure, my family's hurting, the blue collar people that live in my community, we're all hurting, we're tightening our belts. Let's have shared sacrifice. I think if we said across the board we're going to cut programs, whether it be 2.5%, 3, 3% cut, not increase overall. Every program. Not, not getting the concept of, well, we're just not going to increase as much as last year. No, not that. Cut. Two and a half, three percent, every program. So they all have some money. Everybody knows So someone's it. not getting 50, but every Because what happens is these groups then come into my office and other offices, they say, why are we getting cut by 40% when this group is getting a 40% increase? And you don't have any answer? Now, because there's no answer because it's it's ridiculous it's arbitrary it's, patently, it's it's exactly it's you know this this is so if everybody knew look we're gonna have to take a three percent cut this year then agencies could prepare for that that's number one now with economic development or certain areas do you no 
but uh, you know you can't have any sacred cows. But they can prepare for it coming in the next year, yeah. saying, "I know what we're dealing with, so that we can and move." When they come in when that group comes in your office. You'd be like, "Look, you got the cut, but the veterans organizations got a cut. Um, you know, the economic development side got a cut. Medicaid got a got a cut. Everybody got the same cut. So what are you complaining about?" And everybody could have share, a shared cut across the board. That's the type of decision needs to be made in tough side. The other thing is Medicaid, okay? Is the governor going to go after Medicaid fraud? He better. I mean, you, you have every, now you, you're, in, you're in the press, okay? Now you know that your inbox fills up with press releases during the campaign cycle about waste, fraud, and abuse of Medicaid. And then as soon as we get elected, you don't hear about it. Mm -hmm. Now, we spend nearly a billion dollars a week on Medicaid in New York State. We have the Cadillac program in the United States of America. A billion dollars a, a week. Billion dollars a week. Not a year, a week. Right. And we're we're pushing to have more and more folks enroll into Medicaid. So if we even cut one week out of that cycle, it would be a huge savings to the New York State. Where tax. are the problems in Medicaid? Because you know Child Health Plus Family Health Plus, a lot of people say, no, 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 no. But, you know, those things do help children. They say, no, 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 just like the stimulus dollars. Just like when we pump up our budget to, to uh, uh, span a budget gap, a hole, with stimulus dollars, people the next year, when that goes away, say, oh, no, you can't give us a cut. Of course they're, they're going to say that. Same thing with Medicaid. Look, we're spending nearly double the, the per capita amount in the United States of America. Now, if we want to continue to do that, we can, and we're going to go bankrupt. So that's a decision we can make. So if, if legislators this year say, oh, no, we can't cut the services because, you know, people are going to be upset. Yes, they're going to be upset because you're giving out free handouts. But where in Medicaid do you think needs to be cut and where is it? Where is it? I, I, don't, I do not think that there is any sacred cow within Medicaid that cannot be cut or at least considered. And I don't, if you did, once again, did an across-the-board cut to all services, all age groups, all clientele of, say, three to five percent across the board that wouldn't honestly it's a drop in the bucket but because our program is so large you're talking about a large uh, portion of savings. We have about two and a half minutes left so talk to me about you know the health care hospitals they've already taken a, a, a hit you know their reimbursement levels are so low now that they're feeling like how can we even do services where, where how should they respond to this? You know we have to have an open communication uh, in New York State with our hospital boards, with our doctors, and because, you know, we have huge, great professionals in this state, and really, in my opinion, some of the best health care in the country and, of course, uh, in the world. They've got to be part of this solution, and we've got to bring everybody um, to the table. But when it comes on, on Medicaid, and you're right, there are a lot of doctors who now don't even want to touch Medicaid because there's no money in it, right? Um, but we are spending, there's a disconnect because we are spending more on Medicaid than any other state. So the program itself is the problem. I don't think that the professionals uh, in the healthcare industry are the problem and they are the best set to serve us in finding solutions and finding out where's the waste, where's the fraud, and where's the abuse, and how do we localize our efforts on that waste, fraud, and abuse so we're not hurting the people who are doing the right thing. So you think Governor Cuomo's, you know, uh, illustration, you know, of, of the boats and the ships passing and exploding, you thought that was pictorially effective? I, I, I enjoyed more Shelton Silver squirming on the stage as he saw, you know, him in the, in the naval cap as Commodore Silver. So. <laughs> Um, it was very depictive. I mean, you, you know, whenever you, you take on uh, tough issues, and instead of instead of using taxes and fees and backdoor borrowing, those special interest groups are going to come in and they're going to go after the governor. So he knows it. He laid it out there. Now it's up to this legislature to stand firm by him to make those tough decisions and for this governor to stand firm as well. So how do you help the people in northern Westchester, Putnam County, and in the eastern part of Dutchess County that you represent? Where are the things you're going to focus on for that part of the district? Yeah. Um, Property taxes, property taxes, property taxes, jobs, jobs, jobs. If we can uh, get our star rebate check back, if we can uh, cap property taxes this year, um, hopefully free school taxes allow the local option of free school taxes for seniors at the age of 65. And then at the local level, rolling up my sleeves to help businesses create jobs, small businesses that create all those jobs, um, helping them get through the process and advertising the 40th Senate District that we're open for business creating jobs and cutting that tax, I will have done my job. Maybe I can retire in two years. Anything else you want to leave us with? Because we got to go. But I sure, I know you're rushing. You ran in and got to rush out. But we're glad you're here, getting introduced to the people here as, as the New York State Senator from the 40th District. In about 15, 20 seconds, what do you want to say to the people? Stay involved. Uh, you know, we had a huge win on, on this election. But that's when the job of the voters just started. Now it's time to get to work and hold our legislators accountable. And one thing, this Cut New York website, what yeah. is that exactly? Uh, well, they can go to my website, 
at ballfriendy.com and it's there, but I'm looking for solutions. I'm on this SAGE uh, commission, so any, any ideas that they have to cut fat and waste in New York State government, send those to me, and we'll be unveiling those and presenting those to the governor. Tell me the website again here. www.ball4ny.com. And then they can go to that website. Yes, sir. Senator Appreciate Ball, thank you for being a guest on Meet you. the Leaders. Pleasure to be here. also want to thank all of you for joining us. I'm Terrence Micas. For everybody here at Meet the Leaders, as always, have a good night.